Echinoderms. Echinoderms are a group that includes sea stars, sometimes more commonly, well, they are more commonly referred to as starfish, but the more appropriate term is sea stars, as well as um, sea urchins, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. The conoderms are pentaradially symmetrical, so that means that they have a central disc and then body parts are arranged in fives around that. Some um, are secondarily bilateral, so that means that they can actually, here, let's look at it this way. So this means that they're arranged in five, so they have five arms, usually. Um, and that means that they're not opposed, they're not bilaterally symmetrical, which would mean that they could be cut in the middle. The group as a whole has a water vascular system. That means it has a water-filled canal and tube feet. So their feet um, are actual and their movement is based on a system of canals. So here's the central ring and then canal that runs down each of the feet and these are the little tube feet. That is a water system, and that is actually how they locomote. The ring canal opens to the outside via the sewn canal and the madreporite, which is, I'll show you later in an actual photo. Um, it also has polyan vesicles that function in um, water storage. That They also maintain um, pressure and uh, can, um, yeah, I already said they hold for water storage. Tube feet do have some muscular ampulla in them and often have a little suction cup, but not quite always. They function in locomotion, attachment, feeding, um, sometimes gas exchange and waste, and sensory function. Then there is a hemal system that distributes nutrients and the large molecules. First class are the Asteroidea. These are the sea stars, hard and sandy substrates. They exist on their, their spines that are actually movable. Some of them and some of them are fixed. It makes them kind of scratchy. They do have um, dermal branchia, which are a function for gas exchange. Pedicillary, which are pincher-like, which you can see here. Those um, clean and protect the surface, and then tube feet. They are predators, as well as detritus feeders, some of them. They ingest whole prey. They actually can, um, they turn their stomach inside out. Many of them are bivalve feeders, so they're feeding on mollusks. What they do is they actually form their body around a clam and attach the tube feet. And because it's not muscular, they actually they don't tire. And those tube feet, they take turns actually, which ones are pulling on it. So there's a constant pressure on the bivalve. And they just keep pulling until the muscle of the bivalve tires. And they can get it open just enough to stick their stomach inside of the bivalve. And then they start digesting it and then absorb it. There's inter internal transportation of gases, nutrients, um, that's all by diffusion, and a hemal system. Gas exchange and excretion is also by diffusion. The nervous system exists in the ring canal. They also have um, radial nerves that go down the arms and a nerve net. They do have sensory receptors that are across the body surfaces and photoreceptors that are just at the tips of the arms. Here you can see the madreporite here, right here. Regeneration for reproduction. Regeneration in, this, um, in the group, and by group I mean in the echinoderms, is really common. 
meaning that if an arm is broken off, it can be replaced. And in fact, you can actually grow an entire sea star from just a portion of that central disc. Asexual reproduction in some, so you can regenerate after division of a central disc. So, um, and in some cases, sexual reproduction. So you have two different genders, two gonads per arm, and there's external fertilization, and then the, the larvae are planktonic. So this is what, how the larvae actually develop. And the asteroidia, you also have the seed daisies, which are were previously classified um, differently. They're highly modified. They lack arms entirely. They're only about a centimeter um, in diameter. And they're called sea daisies. And I am so sorry because someone has decided to play with a squeaky toy. Okay. Um, basket stars and brittle stars. These are, have very long arms that are really sharply set off from the central disc. So if you look at the photo here, you can see um, the arms and then the central disc. It's very obvious, the distinction. No um, dermal branchiae or pedic pedicillary. Two feet don't have these little suction discs on them. And the madeparite, instead of being um, on the side, is actually on the surface of the central disc. They, the arms themselves make like snake-like movements. Arms in the previous groups are actually more rigid and not nearly as um, fluid in their movements. These are also predators, but also scavengers. In some cases, the arms can sweep the substrate. And you also have the basket stars that are suspension feeders, which is very unusual for this, um, for echinoderms. The coelom is confined to just the central disc. So you don't have um, additional you don't have coelom going down the arms in this group. They're so thin and wispy, it doesn't radiate down. And ammonia is lost by diffusion, so that's their excretion of waste. We also have regeneration in this group. When arms are lost, autonomy is con common. What that means is when they're threatened, so if a predator grabs an arm, if they feel that they really can't get loose, they will lose the arm rather than lose their entire life. Um, and fission can happen across the central disc. Sexual reproduction occurs when the sexes are separate. Gonads are associated with the bursa and are released into the bursa. So eggs can actually be held and fertilized within a bursa and then released for external fertilization. So they're the um, are held there but then fertilized within or released for external development. So you can actually have development occur within the bursa or as planktonic larvae. Sea urchins, sand dollars, and heart urchins. Somewhat of a diverse group. Um, the sea urchins have hard substrates. Sand dollars and hard urchins live in the sand or mud so that they can bury themselves. Uh, sea urchin skeletons are made up of plates that fit together and end up being rounded like this. Um, there are openings in between the plates for two feet. And you do get spines in between them. 
The, pedicil the pedicillary are long stalks, sometimes venomous. There is a water vascular system and the radial canal still exists. Um, which unfortunately is not shown here. Okay. Tube feet still used. And the madreporite still opens. Spines are used for bur burrowing as well. Um, they feed on algae, rhizomes, animal remains. They do have something unique called an Aristotle's lantern. Oh, which is a oh, interesting. Which is kind of he which is here and actually fits here. It is a mouth essentially. What it is is an Con connecting plates of muscles, muscles, plates, and teeth that function to masticate their prey. They have a complete digestive tract, so they have an open, a beginning and an ending. Circulation is in salomic fluids, and gas exchange is just diffusion across gill membranes. Reproduction is dioecious. They do have gonads on the internal body wall and one gonophore in each of five genital ossicles. So for sand dollars they only have four. External fertilization takes place and they have planktonic larvae which um, undergo metamorphosis. One more, the sea cucumbers. An interesting group. They live in hard and soft, so so soft substrates in all oceans, they're elongate. They have one side that's flattened and ventral. They, um, they have tube feet. Their body wall is thick and muscular. This is actually what I would call an attractive sea cucumber. A lot of them are very mm, green and slimy. Um, they, the madreporite is internal. They are filled with salomic fluid. The ring canal encircles the oral end. You can't actually see it. They still do have Polian vesicles, which again maintain pressure and hold reserve, reserves of fluids. Radial canals run between oral and aboral poles. They tube feed. Um, on organic matter by sweeping the substrate with tentacles. They have salomic fluid, gas exchange, is by a respiratory tree, which ex um, attaches to the rectum. It is really what it, it looks like really what it sounds like it looks like. They do have um, occasionally toxins in the body wall for defense. One of their more infamous forms of defense is evisceration where if they are truly threatened, they will eviscerate their um, internal organs, which is to exude their internal organs. They get rid of them, and then they regenerate them. It's expensive energetically, but if your other choice is dying, then I guess that's worth it. They are dioecious. They have a single gonad and a sin single gonophore. Fertilization is external and planktonic larvae. They can also reproduce asexually with transverse fission, which is end to end. They can separate and regeneration. Oh, I forgot about the sea lilies and the feather stars. Most primitive of the echinoderms. Um, so they attach permanently to the, to the substrate by a stalk. They sound exactly as you expect them to. They look like flowers. Okay. There's a sea lily. Um, they have a crown, and which is the flower part, and the calyx, and the stalk. Oh, here are the pinules, which is what the feathery part looks like. The feather stars don't have the stalk. They swim and crawl more on the searing. They look a little more animal. Their arms are used in suspension feeding, both of them. Um, 
um, they do have a nerve mass, which um, and the arms, but they lack a nerve line. Many of them are dioecious, but not quite all of them. Protandry is common. What that means is that the male reproductive organs mature prior to the female. So it happens in the same individual, and that's done in, so that they can avoid self-fertilization, so that they're not cloning. And then the gametes are released through ruptures in the walls of the arms. They do then have planktonic larvae and metamorphosize into adults. Regeneration as common, just as it is in the other conoderms.